China's Galvan lies of hiding its mammoth Galvan death toll has been busted yet again. An Australian report has claimed that People's Liberation Army lost at least nine times more soldiers than its official count of four in the Galavan 2020 clash. According to a new report that's come out, at least 38 Chinese troops drowned while crossing the fast-flowing river in darkness and bone-chilling cold after being chased by the Indian troops from Galvan. The research is prepared by a group of social media researchers after a year-long investigation into the Himalayan clash that took place between India and China. China repeatedly refused to disclose its total casualties, but in February last year, it announced posthumous medals to four of its soldiers who died in the Galvan clash. It recently used a Galvan clash survivor to carry out the Olympic torch in a propaganda drive. Akshita is joining us now for further details. She's joining us live and exclusive with uh, an interview as well, throwing straight across to you. Akshita, first give a sense to our viewers about uh, how the lies have been busted yet again as far as China is concerned, and that comes in as a no surprise. Thank you, Chaiti. Now, the author of this explosive report that confirms the Chinese casualties in the Galvan clashes is joining us on this broadcast. We have with us Anthony Klan, editor of the Klaxon, joining us on this broadcast. Anthony, thank you for joining us from Sydney and taking the time out to talk to us here on India Today. You know, your report on the Chinese casualties in the Galvan clashes is creating quite a stir here in India. In your investigative report, in your piece, you've said that China lost as many as 38 soldiers in the Galvan clashes. That's over nine times higher than what China claimed the casualty count to be. That's correct. China has claimed the casualty count to be four. Now, it didn't uh, come up with any numbers until eight months after the clash, and that was in February of last year. They've come forward and said four people, or they've awarded four people medals posthumously. Yeah. Um, but now it's emerged, this report has emerged, um, suggesting it's much, much higher um, around 38. Um, there, are, there are varying reports, but 38 um, seems to be the pretty the, the popular number, yes. Uh, Anthony, how did you unearth these details? Because, you know, what we've realised in the last almost two years, and you mentioned this in your report as well, about how China has so aggressively censored these details about the casualty count and exactly what transpired in Galwan. Precisely, and that's what's made it so difficult getting the information out, and that, that's why it's remained uh, shrouded in secrecy in a way. You've got um, an, an enormous uh, issue. You have two the, the world's two most populous nations having a clash, and the world doesn't know what's happened. Um, so a lot of it is because of uh, Chinese. Uh, the Chinese government has censored it, um, has been taking down reports from the internet, um, and even uh, arresting one journalist for reporting the fact that the, the death toll was much higher than the four alleged by the Chinese government. And that's exactly what I was going to ask you. You know, when uh, you've got a tool like the internet, how is it that China's managed so far to really hide these kind of details with regards to exactly what the casualty count is? There have been varying figures. There have been varying reports that have stated that, you know, the casualty count is much higher. China has maintained, as you said, that is just at four. How have they managed to keep it, you know, under the covers for so long? A lot of it is, is, is the censorship of the Chinese media. Um, one, threatening people that, that speak the truth, and two, removing any reports um, of what actually happened. So people are quite scared, obviously, to talk out. Now, our uh, researchers have come by this information from a number of sources uh, over a year-long investigation, as you mentioned. Now, they've gathered um, source material, um, interviews, a range of, a range of materials. Um, but in particular, it's most interesting, the materials that we've obtained that have been removed from the Chinese internet. Now, that's quite telling in terms of what the, the, the government officials have been looking to, to censor and remove. And there's been a specific focus on any mention about the true casualty count uh, from that battle. Uh, I want to also understand from you, you know, you're saying this took almost a year long of research to actually come to this kind of details, uh, which has never really been out. The fact that you've pegged the casualty count to be 38 is something that's not really been spoken of before. Yes, there have been reports that suggested that it's much more inflated than what China shows it to be. I want to know that in you and your team's correspondence with Chinese journalists, with anyone based in China, what their response was to exactly what transpired in Galwan. So the, 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 the figure of 38 is, is, has come up repeatedly. Um, we don't know the exact figure, but the 38 is, is our best guess. Um, it's mm -hmm. certainly a lot more than four. 
Um, there have been figures in uh, in the Indian media as well as high as 100 or more. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we can't verify that, but um, not to say it's incorrect, but 38 is the figure that keeps coming back. Um, and our, our sources on the ground in China um, uh, confirming that figure. Also, Anthony, in your mind, in your view, uh, do you think that China will ever admit to, you know, the exact scale of damage that they suffered in the Galvan clash in 2020? I don't think so. Um, there's a re the reason for that being um, after the clash, China refused to admit any casualties whatsoever. Yeah. Now, its line was, its argument was, we don't, we don't discuss casualties, full stop. Um, but there are a couple of officials that did, and they did admit that they were casualties. Now, they've mentioned these four deaths, but they've also given awards to these medals to these four um, soldiers, two of them um, very senior. Mm. So they haven't necessarily ruled out more, um, but they're, they're certainly not, um, they're certainly indicating that there's no more at least. So I suspect they won't. Um, it is very interesting that they came out with the, the, the names of these four um, soldiers in February, on February 19th of last year, which was eight months after the, the incident. So the question is, why have they come out so much later? Um, presumably they've, they've come under pressure and they've thought they've had to say something uh, because people are asking too many questions and it's just not going to go away. You know, Anthony, I can only imagine how difficult it was for you to compile this report, considering how, you know, China blocks and stonewalls any attempt to get details on the Galvan clash. And that exactly is, uh, you know, what I want to also talk about. Uh, the fact that two years on, there's still no clarity on exactly what the exact death toll is here. In your view, what do you think it really speaks about the Chinese regime itself? Well, quite clearly, it's concerning if there's been a battle. China's come out and said it's not to blame. It blames India and India mm -hmm. blames China. Um, but the, this begs the question, um, if China's telling the truth in this and it, it bears no responsibility, then why isn't uh, coming completely clean on the matter? So in the absence of um, China coming out and, and, and saying what's actually happened, it's more difficult to believe their version of events. And finally, Anthony, uh, you know, considering all the secrecy, uh, the kind of hiding of debt toll that China has been doing, how do you think it sets like a dangerous precedent almost, you know, internationally? The fact that something as serious as a clash uh, between India and China has been covered up to this extent and Galvan clashes, in fact, time and again has been used as propaganda by China. Indeed, and it speaks to a much bigger issue. I mean, we've seen China um, acting aggressively in the South China Sea and, of course, towards Taiwan. So these issues, um, as we know, the, the Chinese apparatus is exceptionally good at covering issues up. So the question begs, of course, how much, how much is being uh, prevented, uh, how much information is being held back from Chinese, the Chinese public, but more importantly, how much in the future potentially will be held back uh, regarding future skirmishes? Uh, so that's obviously a major issue, um, a major security issue for, for other nations. Absolutely. Anthony, I appreciate you taking the time out and joining us here on India Today. Thank you for giving your insights also on your report. Uh, Anthony Klander has reported extensively on what exactly transpired in Galwan in 2020, confirming that China has very much downplayed its casualty count. Chetty, it's back to you. Absolutely. All right, Abhishek Bhalla is also with us at the moment. Abhishek, what do you make of this exclusive uh, conversation that Akshita just had? And of course, it's uh, going on to prove how China downplayed the entire ca casualty uh, count and hence proves our story about how we mentioned that China's lying propaganda has been revealed. Well, Chaiti, it's uh, not just uh, the casualty uh, figures that this uh, report uh, puts out. You know, it gives a specific number of uh, 38 uh, dead uh, on the Chinese side. Uh, but it also brings out uh, certain new facets uh, and uh, information details on what led uh, to the clash in Galwan on 15th of June 2020. For the, perhaps for the first time, you know, uh, something has been put out in public domain that says that there was a clash on June 6 as well uh, near the Galwan Valley. And uh, the reason for this clash was because uh, the Indian Army had constructed a temporary bridge uh, over the river, uh, and this is something that uh, China had been opposing to. Uh, there were negotiations going on, and uh, uh, it was decided that the Indian Army will dismantle this bridge uh, on a condition that uh, the Chinese will also move back, remove the infrastructure that they had uh, put up. But instead, the Chinese secretly dismantled this bridge, and that's what led 
uh, to tensions escalating and also the fact that you know uh, this report mentions that this first clash took place on june 6 i would like to re remind our viewers that it was on june 6 2020 yeah. when the first four commander level meeting took place between the chinese pla and indian army so a suggestion that when the top commanders were talking to de-escalate things, perhaps there was uh, a clash going on in Galwan, in Galwan at the same time. Leave it at that. Thanks, uh, Abhishek, uh, for joining us with those details.